He says here, Acts chapter 4, verse 31. And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And guess what they did? And they spoke the word of God with boldness. Being filled, influenced by the Holy Spirit to the point of action, they began to speak the word of God with boldness. Acts chapter 13, verse 9. Then Saul, who is also called Paul, filled with the Holy Ghost, set his eyes on him and said, O fool. Now, this is when Paul is dealing with Elymas, the, the great power, you might say, or witch doctor. And he said, and said, so he was filled with the Holy Ghost and moved to say, now watch, but his saying also goes beyond that. O fool of all subtlety and all mischief, you child of the devil, you enemy of all righteousness, will you not cease to pervert the right ways of the Lord? Now notice, he was filled with the Spirit to the point that the Spirit used his words to speak to this person, and he called this person full of subtlety and mischief and a child of the devil and an enemy of all righteousness. That was the Holy Spirit speaking. Notice he wasn't saying some nice little sweet thing. Oh, now... You shouldn't act that way. That is not what he did. He called him a child of the devil. And it was the spirit of God that spoke it. He said, will thou not cease to pervert the right ways of the Lord? And now behold, the hand of the Lord is upon thee and you will be blind, not seeing the season, the sun for a season. And immediately there fell on him a mist and a darkness. And he went about seeking some to lead him by the hand. Then the deputy when he saw what was done, believed, being astonished at the doctrine of the Lord. And again, that word for Paul being filled, Plato. He was moved, he was influenced by what? The spirit of holiness, the spirit of God, the spirit of faith, the spirit of grace. Now get this, all of these are names for the Holy Spirit. He was moved by the Holy Spirit, which means he was moved by all of these things in the Holy Spirit to do the action he did. Now, Acts chapter 13, verse 45 says, And when the Jews saw the multitudes, they were filled with envy and spoke against those things which were spoken by Paul, contradicting and blaspheming. So now notice, they were filled with envy and they spoke against Paul and the things he said. That word filled, same word. There's no difference between being, now understand what I mean by this. There's no difference in the filling that takes place, whether it's the Holy Spirit or envy or madness or anger or fear or anything else. It's the same filling. What does it mean? How do we know if somebody's mad? They say something, do something. Otherwise, you don't know. Isn't that right? So if they were filled with madness, they did something that let you know they were mad. Now, if they were not filled with madness, let's just say they were a little mad. You might not know it. Why? Because they weren't filled to the point of action. Do you hear that? Okay. Now notice, how do you get filled with anger? How do you get filled with fear? You look at the things, you talk about the things that produce fear and anger. How do you get filled with the Holy Spirit? You look at and talk about the things that produce the fruit of the Spirit and produce the Holy Spirit himself. When you talk about the things of God, that's why Paul told Timothy, stir up the gift that's in you. What's he saying? Timothy, get filled up again. Stir it up. Stir up that gift in you. Stir up the Holy Spirit in you. Talk about the things of God. Remember the things that God has done for you. Remember the prophecies that are going. Talk about these things. Don't be ashamed. Don't let anybody talk about your youth. You talk about the things you've seen. You've been with me all over the world, the known world at that time. Talk about those things. When you do that, The one that's in you will get stirred up and he'll want to act up. And whenever he gets you filled enough, you'll act. And usually you act without thinking. It's amazing. More is done by people who act without thinking than the people that try to think themselves into acting. As the old saying says, you know, after all is said and done, there'll be more said than done. That's the way it usually is in church. So, okay. Matthew chapter, where are we at here? Yeah, well, actually, look at this, verse 46. Then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold. What does that mean? Oh, they were filled, okay? 
and said, it, is, it was necessary that the word of God should first be spoken to you, but seeing you put it from you and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life, lo, we turn to the Gentiles. Man, can you imagine telling somebody that? You're witnessing somebody and they're like, nah, I don't believe that. Okay, you know, if you judge yourself unworthy of everlasting life, okay, fine. Then forget you, go ahead. And you walk off. That might make an impact on them. Well, wait, 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 I didn't say, I would. well, you're unworthy. You just said it. No, no, I'm, I'm not unworthy. Well, if, you're, if you were worthy, then you would listen to what I'm saying. You'd get saved. Well, I'm worthy. Are you worthy? I'm, I know I'm worthy. I'm t- then you have to show them how unworthy they are. But anyway, that's, now, 